you are Amanda here from ScrimpyMommy.co.uk and today I'm going to show you how I've made this lovely card. I'm working my way through the colours of the Gingham Gala DSP which is the hot DSP of Spring Summer catalogue with Stampin' Up! Everybody's using it, everybody wants it, it's beautiful um, and there are five colours in the DSP and those five colours are the same five colours that are in the free organdy ribbon in the celebration leaflet, they're the same. Okay, so we've got Balmy Blue, we've got Daffodil Delight, Grapefruit Grove and Highland Heather which means I just have my Lemon Lime Twist one to do. Now it's a clean and simple card but it's got that little touch of extra luxury to it because we've raised it on foam, we've got our pearls and I have made a handmade paper button here so I'm going to show you how we've made it and then I will have my set of five. Okay, so I have my card base here and this measures eight and a half by five and seven eighths, scored at four and one eighths and we fold it to make our card base and we're going to have it tenfold. And then I've got a top layer which is also whisper white and this measures five and five eighths by three and seven eighths. Okay, so first of all we're just going to stamp a very sim simple sentiment. Now I'm using um, the archival basic black. This has retired. It's not available with Stampin' Up! anymore. Um, it's just my personal preference because it's a darker, more intense black. We do have other black inks that you can get hold of. Or you can use the colour to match the DSP as well. That's another idea. So I'm just going to stamp this hello. Um, in the bottom right corner and this is one of my favourite stamps and it comes from the floral floral frames set it's beautiful um, I'll leave links on my blog at scrimpymommy.co.uk of everything I've used um, so then what we're going to do is I'm just going to set that to dry and using our Daisy Delight Punch or Daisy Punch I can't remember its exact name I'm going to punch two flowers now I'm going to make sure that both of them are punching out the squares in the same direction otherwise your flower will, will make you go cross-eyed. So <laughs> north to south um, with the gingham lines straight that way okay and then punch another one so that the gingham lines are straight north to south, north to south. You know, if you if you punch it out just on the wonk like that, um, it doesn't look as nice. And I'm only saying that because I've tried it. <laughs> so I have the so it's running top to bottom. Okay, and I can move that away. And then just using just my um, bone folder, I just gently curl those leaves. We're not going for a realistic looking flower. Flowers aren't gingham. <laughs> so you don't need to spend loads of time curling the, the leaves and, and giving them loads of dimension because I don't want them to look realistic. They're just fun and bright. Okay. And then I'm just going to stick those together with a little bit of tape runner in the centre but when we layer them up we layer them offset so that that leaf there goes in the gap between the other two other leaves okay and that's how you get a nice full flower okay just give them a bit more of a curl all right and we'll set that to one side now i'm going to show you how to make the button so let me bring in the supplies that I need for that. So to make it, I'm using the Lemon Lime Twist ink, which obviously coordinates. <laughs> I've got my three quarters of an inch circle punch. I've got some scrap and I've got my tabs for everything stamp. And I'm going to use this little circle here. It's like a scalloped circle. Now this set is awesome. I love this set and I use these little tiny sentiments for all sorts of things. So I'm getting my little circle, you can see it's well used, and I'm going to mount it on a small block and then ink it up and get rid of that. Like so. And this is going to be our button. Just move those out of the way because I don't need them. So then I need to punch it out with my three quarters of an inch circle punch or you could cut it by hand. 
that's just easier with a punch I like I like punches <laughs> it's nice and precise and it's quick right so then what I'm going to do to create my button is I'm using one of these little hole punches and this is a quite a diddy one um, I don't know if this is still available I think they did away with it but you can use any hole punch if you don't have a hole punch get a foam mat and a tool and just poke a hole with something sharp there's always a way to do everything if you don't have the exact tools that I have okay so I'm just lining it up fairly central and I'm looking at the bottom and I'm just going to punch that hole there and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to do it the same at the other side but I'm looking all the time to make sure it's kind of like even and it's lined up so it, it looks you know something like and it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit creased whilst you do it because what we're then going to do is get a little piece of um, the white what's it called baker's twi white baker's twine and we're going to just feed it through the back if you got nimble fingers you could tie it in a bow you could use a very thin ribbon um, my fingers are quite I'm um, struggling at the moment with my hands um, with my fibro stupid whatever disease it is <laughs> well it's not a disease but um, so my hands today feel like big fat sausages so I feel like I'm struggling a bit so I'm just going to tie um, a double knot basically it's, it's about all I can manage today <laughs> oh dear me and then I'm just going to snip that twine and the length that I want is just to the just pull it and when it's at the edge of the circle trim it and then you know you've got them both the same at either side and it's just about right if you tie it a different way it'll lay a bit flatter but it's just a button but you could use these on, on other things as well. I think that's super cute. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of glue. Not too much. Don't need a lot. And I'm going to stick that in the centre. Bearing in mind I want a flower pointing north, south, east and west to give me a guide of some nice kind of symmetry. I, I do like things to be a bit symmetrical. I'm a Leo and <laughs> we like shiny things, we like bright things and we like things to be symmetrical. If they're offline, it bugs me. I'm just lifting the, the top layer of the flower and just lifting those petals just to ever so much. I mean, once they're in the envelope, they'll flatten anyway. So I'm just going to bob that to one side now and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to add the ribbon. Now I don't normally measure, I normally do things by eye, but if you want a set of five, you want them all to be the same, okay? So here's what we do. So we've got our sentiment here, okay? Flip it over and on the side where the sentiment is, no, <laughs> flip it over and on the side where the sentiment isn't, you want to measure in one and three quarters of an inch, at the, close to the top, one and three quarters, and close to the bottom one and three quarters so that is on the opposite side to the sentiment okay and then what you want to do is turn it that way and you want to measure in from the short edge up one and three quarters and make a mark have I got that right from the bottom is it yeah where's my sentiment <laughs> <laughs> so from the bottom there up one and three quarters there we go okay and then here up one and three quarters I get myself all confused then so basically you've got four marks each one is measured at one and three quarters in for those and one and three quarters up for those okay and those are going to give us the guideline of where to put our ribbon because if you know it's a simple process but if you want to do them all the same you want them lined up so then where you've put each of those marks just put a little bit of tear tape this is on the back a little 
bit tear to it. I think it's nice to have sets of things that match. Um, I do like it. And it's always easier to design one card and make loads of it than think of five different cards, isn't it? I do think so. So I've just taken the backing off of this one here and leaving the backing on the rest. Just add the edge of the ribbon there and then wrap it over the front and then just turn it and there's you've got it on the back so hold it trim it to a roughly where you want it to and then what I do is just to double check that I've got my ribbon straight I've got it lined up my card base lined up on my grid mat I can see which lines this ribbon's at and I'm going to make sure that the other ribbon at that side is on the same lines okay <laughs> I'm not normally this precise but it makes a difference if you just take that little bit of extra time on this otherwise it'll be skew with and they won't match we don't want that okay this would make a lovely gift set you could decorate one of the stamping up acetate card boxes to, and put five of these in with some envelopes and it would be a beautiful gift so now we're going to turn it that way and we're going to remove the tape on this one okay Add our ribbon, wrap it around, it's going to crisscross over as you can see. Get off, got a bit of fluff there. Oh, my stomach's grumbling, I hope you can't hear it. I've not had any breakfast yet, <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> oh, dear me. I did have to delay doing my video as I switched the camera on and then the um, the refuse collectors, or as we call them in the UK, the bin men, came and um, made a right racket so I had to sit here impatiently waiting for them to finish the street and go away right so that's that bit done okay now if you look that's nice and straight nice and and, and lined up beautifully so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some foam tape on the back now there's lots of foam tape out there if you've got some use what you've got i'm using the stamping up ones because I know that they are pretty awesome okay they are good um, and you get long strips and you, which you can just basically cut to size okay got another strip of them already out with them I think you get two full strips in a pack you get quite a lot you know and you don't you don't need all of that okay now if you want to be really frugal you can do it in bits like cut it up like you you know as if you're using dimensionals however i've found that if you just go that extra mile and don't always be tight <laughs> and you do do the full length of the card for some reason it just looks better and i think it's because the whole entire card is being supported with foam and it does make a difference okay just trim that but any little pieces that are left I do save um, you know I'm not made of money <laughs> okay and another strip so these are awesome you know don't think they're just for shaker cards um, if you've ever added a, a, a card base and added a million and one dimensionals you know it can be a bit tiresome so that's where your foam strip comes in one down here you will have to bear with me if I'm working a bit slow today like I say I've got sausage they, they, they probably look normal to you but to me they feel like they I've, it feels like I've got boxing gloves on it's a horrible feeling trying to uh, use small dainty things like this foam tape when you feel like you've got sausage fingers <laughs> anybody that suffers with it will know what I mean <laughs> Oh dear. Right, so and I am putting it in the middle. I am going all out and I'm adding extra because that will support the middle of that card so it won't get all dinted and squashed and look rubbish. We don't want it to look rubbish. If you've spent time over a card, you want it to look really nice. So I'm now going to bring in my card base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove just the bottom strip first. I'm not removing them all at once. The reason being... Um, I don't want it to be wonky so I'm going to lift up with my fingers where the bottom sticky bit is 
and I'm going to use the top bit of my card which has still got the backing on as a guide for spacing. I'm going to just get them bits off. So I'm lining that up and I'm having a look if that's about right for my spacing and I think that is. So when I've got the top lined up I know the bottom will be lined up so then I can press the bottom. Okay so that's all nice and lined up now and I'm just doing it there. Okay so then I'll just gently lift this bit back and start and peel off all of those foam tape backings. You can get in there, you're not going to spoil your card by doing it, just be careful. And get that off. My, um, with my sausage fingers. <laughs> Oh dear, I don't think I'll be doing any more crafting today. I think I'll just get on with something else because it, it it's just not a... Uh, it makes me work slow. So do thank anybody who's uh, stayed with me through the entirety of this video. <laughs> I'll just turn it over and just gently press all around, gently. Okay, and then that is beautifully lined up. We've got that that subtle dimension there and you know there's no gaps there because I've used the I haven't been tight with the with the foam tape so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some tear tape now this is um, a good way to adhere this because we've got the organdy ribbon there and it's loose I'm just going to attach some of the tear tape at, uh, at an angle across the middle there and that will hold down that organdy ribbon um, so that it doesn't shift about and it will also house our flower like so so get it on central give it a press okay and then just to finish it off like I say if you want to go that extra mile um, you want it to look really really pretty I've got some of the basic pearls and I'm using a larger one and then a, oops this is going to be a challenge <laughs> and then, oh dear, a smaller one, and so the large one at the top, and then the smaller one going down, and then in the bottom corner here, I'm going to have one that way, and then I'm going to have the smaller one going along there. Okay. So I've only got the um, yellow one to do now, the Daffodil Delight, and my set is cut. Oh no, I've done it. What am I on about? I thought I hadn't done it, but I did. Uh, and so now I have a set of five beautiful, beautiful cards. I hope you'll give them a try. Um, and, you know, one of the good things about stamping up is that that, that colour there matches that colour there. <laughs> And the ink that I've used for the button also matches because all of our colours coordinate perfectly. Go and give it a try. I'll leave all the details and some pictures over on my blog, scrimpymommy.co.uk. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for being patient and I'll see you again soon.